Okay, welcome everyone. My name is Andrea Wallen, Library Coordinator for the Camlets Thompson School District, and I'm one of the presenters for the workshop today. Thank you for joining us as we share our exciting journey exploring ways to use loose parts in the school library learning commons. Many practical instructional ideas will be shared, including provocation tables to spark imagination and curiosity. We'll also talk about how loose parts can encourage play, inquiry, and story building. Before we begin, I would like to respectfully acknowledge that we are learning together today on the traditional territory and lands of the Sequatmec people. It is my pleasure to introduce the learning team with you today. Um, sharing our experiences are Marianne Vanderpool, Nicole Gorman, Melissa Hunter, Rick Reynolds, and myself. Over the past five years together, School District 73 teacher librarians, School District 73 Aboriginal ed, um, education resource teachers and classroom teachers and district coordinators, we have experimented uh, using loose parts to retell oral stories and legends and in writer's workshop environments and most recently to teach uh, measurement con concepts. This is a learning journey for us. Um, we are not experts, but rather we are learners. Um, very excited to share our experiences through the lens of the First Peoples Principles of Learning. These are some of our highlights. As you can see, the core competencies are embedded in our work as we document learning and along with our students, reflect, share, and make meaningful connections. Our, our innovation grant kickstarted our learning journey um, in 2016, uh, which involved working with our Aboriginal Ed Department um, and closely with our early learning coordinator, Marianne, who's here with us today, building on our background understanding of traditional oral stories, features, and characteristics. We strengthened our teaching techniques by helping students learn how to retell stories using loose parts. In 2017, some team members had the amazing opportunity to visit Reggio-inspired Opal School of the Portland Museum. And we were thrilled to continue our courageous conversations with Opal lead instructors in subsequent months. When they visited and presented in Kamloops, um, they also presented in Kelowna, deepening our understanding of inquiry-based learning. We shared our learning with local teacher teams, um, teacher librarians, hosting uh, workshops, exploring the core competencies with curated lists of picture books and loose parts. Um, hosting, of course, the BCTLA Summer Institute in 2017 was one of our most memorable highlights. Um, it's a, a culmination of collaborative projects, sharing oral storytelling strategies, um, ethnobotany, local archeology, span um, Sequatmec culture and history at the former Kamloops Residential School. In the spring of 2020, um, we started to lean into story studios, visioning, discussing and planning for storage in library learning commons environments, space, design and instruction. And most recently, um, we were able to actually meet together. Uh, it brought so much joy to our team uh, we joined Marianne this fall with the goal of enhancing, well, actually in June and fall, <laughs> enhancing numeracy instruction uh, using loose parts. So why loose parts? My goodness. Uh, well, the term loose parts was coined by Simon Nicholson. Um, he was an architect and in 1972 he coined this. Um, he discusses how creativity is not only for the gifted and because everyone is creative. And when they're provided with an environment with the right kind of number of variables, loose parts can be used as manipulated, transported and transformed. For children to make sense of their world, this is key. And loose parts provide endless opportunities for their innate curiosity 
and to develop wonder in everything they do. When you think about um, a gallery or a museum or an exhibit, um, engagement in a blank wall or even the beautiful artwork is wonderful, but um, it's more interactive with those moving pieces. It brings you in that physical content, um, draws your attention and invites you to experiment. The versatility of these materials provide children with virtually endless ways to problem solve, to engineer, to explore their creativity, develop fine motor skills, build language and vocabulary, push mathematical and scientific thinking, and investigate social emotional development, one of our key ones right now, especially after COVID or during COVID, not even after COVID. Um, up in the corner, you'll see uh, Getting Started with Loose Parts. It's a PDF that was created. Um, and uh, if Easy Reg was up, um, you would have access to, so maybe you still do. Or I, I put it on there uh, a couple days ago, so I'm not sure if you've accessed yet. If you haven't, you will get a PDF of the guide to Loose Parts. We'll get it to you somehow uh, through, 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 through some way, <laughs> through Joseph some way, I'm sure. So uh, expect that. Okay, good morning. I'm Nicole Gorman. I'm going to take us back to the beginning where it all started. And that's with our storytelling kits. In 2016, 2017, we gathered as a group of TLs with Marianne's help, and we submitted an innovation grant proposal and was accepted. Um, from there, we figured out what to purchase and what to gather for loose parts. And on the screen, you can see some of the examples in picture and also just in the writing as to things that you can start to collect and gather. And then we learned how to use it in the classroom. Students use the loose parts to inspire their own writing of a First Nations legend and then chose how to present it. There's a few more pictures just of the kids using their loose parts. We had trays to collect everything. Some of them are natural materials. Some of them are store-bought. Dollar stores will become your best friends <laughs> uh, for every season, quite honestly. And then um, as Marianne has showed us over and over again, it's not just uh, one aisle of the dollar store. It's amazing as to where you can find treasures. So I won't play them just because we are behind in time. But on the next few slides, I have put some of the examples that my students created using their loose parts. They studied First Nations legends and then wrote their own and decided how they wanted to present them. So one of them is a Talking Rocks video. Another one, this one is a book creator and they use the loose parts and change the pieces on their trays. Another group of children uh, wrote a play, put on costumes and did a skit. Another one did puppets. And then we used technology and green screen obviously to put it all together. This one was obviously the kids acting out. So what roles do stories play in our lives? Students were immersed in local culture as they explored the vibrant oral tradition of Aboriginal stories and legends using loose parts and picture books. Students explored a variety of Aboriginal stories and legends and analyzed the traits of good stories. Then they learned how to retell stories using whatever they chose. Uh, this one is uh, retelling using rocks. And finally, this one was using puppets and green screen in behind. Hello, I'm Melissa Hunter, and I, I'm a teacher librarian at a French Immersion Elementary School here in Kamloops. So some of my experience is going to be working in second language with the children, and I find that to be very powerful. It's a, a great avenue to help the students get their ideas going, and then we can help them build their vocabulary in a second language. And of course, in a first language, it's that much easier. Um, 
In this slide, I show how we take a, uh, an interesting picture book as a way to jump off and um, teach them about different concepts and introduce new vocab. Sometimes we teach the vocab and uh, post it on the wall so that they have some sort of a word wall to use. And then they can use the loose parts to organize their ideas and build their stories. And here you can see that this is a grade one class and they were copying off the board the very short sentence, but then later on they might add other vocab words to their sentence. Here you can see what we did with a grade three class and that we went into a bit more detail. They were able to offer more, more ideas in French and um, because it is their second language, after they shared their ideas, I printed them off and gave them their vocabulary on a piece of paper that they could use. But um, I've uh, done this in the past without using loose parts and I see a huge difference in creativity. And, and um, it's almost like the writing block is taken away when they can build their ideas using loose parts. And here is with the older grades, this was very powerful and I was pleasantly surprised. Um, we put together some tinker trays with parts that we found, I found at Value Village, um, donations from classes that were cleaning things out from the dollar store and put them in bead containers and then had these out for the students to pick from. And, I got them to pick 10 objects and um, it was incredible the connections they made to um, characteristics of their different characters and how they were easily to easily able to develop these characters in rich ways. And I think they even surprised themselves. Uh, I got the idea of using the Tinker Trace and the post-it notes from Angela Stockman's work. And she's published some excellent books on combining loose parts with, with writing and we're going to have pictures of those books at the end of this slide so you can refer to that but using the post-it notes it seemed to make it easier for them to write their ideas down and they they weren't um, tied to writing their ideas on a piece of paper and experiencing writer's block it was it seemed to be very freeing for them all right we talked oral stories we talked writing fantastic um Amazing opportunities um, librarians can provide students with, but uh, what about other subject areas? We kind of posed that question as we got together. Um, and our group initiated great discussions around the concepts of math uh, in loose parts, and in particular, the idea of measurement. This is a gap that uh, our schools felt, our, and our librarians felt was missing uh, from the, the, the discussion. So we took advantage of our new open, maker space here um, at our lear uh, teacher learning center here at the Henry Group. We're super lucky to have. And uh, we push our project to the next level. Um, and the team decided to delve, delve into this idea. So our first gathering, <laughs> uh, I set up a lot of provocations. Um, provocations having to do with dinosaurs because it's my son's favorite uh, theme to, to explore. And of course, I, then I had lots of materials to play with at the time. So next few uh, slides are going to show you and inspire hopefully some creativity and provoke some questions. And later on, you guys are more than welcome to ask those questions in the chat box. And we have some time banked for you guys um, so we can answer some of those questions. All right, we read stories. We measured real life sizes of dinosaurs. We measured feet, our feet, their feet. Uh, we played with manipulatives. We measured with non-standard units as well as the standards. And we even created our own stories. But they didn't stop there with just dinosaurs. We have to do another theme. So when we met again, we decided to work on pumpkins. Of course, fall, right? And pumpkin time, those are in abundance. But how are the books that we read in our, in our daily readings with children, how can we push them to include math concepts like measurement? You'd be surprised at how much you can pull out of a book with distance and size and language um, that have to do with math. 
And we even got a little messy with it too, which was fun. It kind of pushed them out of their comfort zone. The library is a tough place to be uh, hammering pumpkins. So uh, we'll see. <laughs> Uh, hi, everyone. Um, I'm Rick Reynolds, and I uh, te am a teacher librarian at two elementary schools, uh, point six at one and point four at the other. So I was, um, I'm always looking for ways to, uh, once we started with the, uh, the math loose parts card, to integrate it into my daily library time. So I see most of my classes in 30 to 40 minute blocks of time. So um, and quite often that involves book exchanges or book talks and such. And I wanted to um, make uh, our math loose parts card a meaningful uh, time during each of those library blocks. So um, as you can see on the screen, when the classes came to the library to visit me for exchanges, um, I have a different challenge set out for student groups to tackle each week, sort of, a, again, a provocation. And each challenge is an open-ended question. Um, I don't necessarily read uh, the uh, a book um, each each library block uh, because uh, I want um, ultimately I want the carts to be going to classrooms and so I will book talk some of the math uh, books that are in our, our loose parts cart and uh, with the ultimate goal that teachers will read it more in depth when uh, they wheel the carts to their classrooms, uh, because I don't want that, uh, oh, but we've already read this book already uh, when they take the cart to their, their classrooms. Um, here's an example of one of the challenges was uh, based on the book Equal Schmequal and it's uh, line symmetry. So getting kids to explore all the different parts uh, to create symmetrical pictures. And these are, these are some examples from some uh, grade one students on, the, on this slide. So as you can see, they, um, they knew what they were doing and they had fun while doing it too. Um, I, and that, that's all for now, yes. <laughs> That's okay. I'll pop in again here just to show you what it looked like in a French immersion library. And I followed Rick's lead and put out a provocation in my library and they were able to use their French to complete the provocation. And everyone was very enthusiastic about it, especially the older students. They seemed to really get into it. Um, okay. Uh, well, um, after working with Marianne, we got some ideas on how to use measurement with loose parts. And we also were given some funding this year to purchase some picture books that tied in with numeracy, French picture books. So I did the same thing that, that Rick mentioned where I read part of the book to get it going. And then we set out the objects that the students could measure and some of the non-traditional objects they could use to measure with. And they loved working with these different items. And, we're so enthusiastic about completing the assignment. Uh -huh. All right, lots to take in, tons on the slides, snapshotting. We actually gave you access to the slide deck as well. So hopefully you'll get the link to that as, and you, you guys can have access to watch the videos and see everything uh, and relook at and re-examine some of those beautiful questions asked on the tables because that's always one of those um, where did you come up with the questions right and um so that's there but um there's an elephant in the room the storage right you're gonna say to me what about the storage that's a lot of things that's a lot of pieces and so the team came to me and said listen if we're going forward with this and we're working on math we need storage solutions so we did it uh, luckily last year with COVID, i got a fantastic early learning grant money and um we worked on that but before that you should ask yourself some questions. <laughs> what loose parts um, could you find to use to support students in your learning? So when we talk loose parts, we usually think of those miniatures and things, but loose parts can also be uh, everything from pastels to paints, Play-Doh, to all those things that help and uh, you physically manipulate objects and, and work with. So don't just think beads and rocks and, and nature outside, although they can be. Some natural product, some not natural product. Um, how do you pre students prefer to learn? Some really like the manipulatives, some don't like the messy stuff. Just be careful. Um, how they're uh, how are you using your space? Um, how might you respond to their needs and what they want to explore with? 
And then that storage issue, right? Here it comes. You ready for it? <laughs> Here's the beautiful carts. It's gorgeous. Ooh, it's beautiful. It's big and tons of room inside, as well as wheels on the bottom and a, and a push part. So it can go from room to room, but it can't, it does fit through the door, which is really important. It has to fit through those doors at schools. Um, and there's your inside. And we labeled everything beautifully, of course, and put it all in there. And we've been adding as we go. So this is the beginning stages. And I know we've added more, but also there's storage on the outside too. And we put in all kinds of flip things on the outside. All right. So this is sort of the meat and potatoes uh, practical aspect of loose parts. Um, this, is, this is my car, one cart I have because I have two schools. Uh, this is my one cart on the right hand side of the of your slide. And again, I am as as with all of us, we're continuing to add to the carts <clears throat> uh, from the basics that we did uh, receive. And uh, I have a contents list that I have like taped to the door. Um, and it, and just a sample contents list is shown on on the left hand side of the screen. It's there because ultimately my goal is, even though I'm not quite ready to do that yet, as I'm still sort of in servicing the teachers, as I demonstrate in the library ways to use the cart, I'm hoping that they're, that's also tweaking their creativity. So ultimately I want this cart to be traveling around because it is on wheels to classrooms and then individual teachers using it in their, in their rooms. Hence the, uh, the supply list or the contents list on the door so that what goes out to them in theory and uh, <laughs> uh, wishful thinking all comes back. And so that's a way that they can check that everything, everything is in the cart. Um, as Marianne has said, you have to get creative with storage systems. So um, uh, jars, um, canning jars, peanut butter jars, all those kinds of things, especially if your budget is limited, but those are all great for um, for extra storage in your cart, especially um, if you don't have libraries with a lot of wall space so with uh, bookshelves that you could store bins on and such. So um, that's worked for me. I wanted to share with you uh, some simple ideas for loose parts and some easy ways to store them. For the past few years, I've been using these plastic trays that I picked up at the dollar store. They look like baskets. And then um, just a very simple selection of loose parts that stay the same. And then they're easily stacked on two shelves in the library that I'll show you in the next screen. But um, even though we use the same materials quite frequently, the students never get bored with them. They um, always find a different a different uh, construction, a different uh, different thing to build to go with what we're doing in the library based on a book or maybe based on something else we're learning. And when, as the seasons change, you can add different elements to the, to the baskets and that always adds a lot of excitement to it. This is how I store uh, my loose parts in the library. We had a computer lab that we weren't using anymore because we we're now using some, using Chromebooks. So we repurposed the computer lab into a makerspace slash story studio. I don't have a full picture of it here, but I'm fortunate to have bookshelves along one side of it. And um, on the shelving unit closest to the circulation desk, I store my baskets easy for me to access. And then further along in the second picture, you'll see a huge selection of loose parts that teachers can sign out. And we call that our loose parts lending library. So next steps, um, going forward, um, quite simply, um, our team um, would like to spend more time using loose parts uh, in the library learning commons. We'd love to go in and, and um, uh, go into other library learning commons and, and really watch each other present and, um, and share with each other, reflect and, and, and document student learning. Um, we find that we learn best by observing each other and, and then connecting and, and having conversations. Um, we hope to engage in some more action research and, and simply share. 
at the District Resource Center Library, where I work, um, we are, we plan to um, add more story basket loose parts kits um, because that that's been a, a big demand from classroom teachers as, as they have seen this work, and they would like to integrate um, some of these ideas in their classroom environments, um, but also for other teacher librarians to sign out to for their own spaces. We have included in, the, in these slides some of the professional resources that we have purchased and, and used as a team. We have, um, um, these are just beautiful books, lots of practical ideas and, and pictures. So this is uh, Loose Parts and Story Making. And in addition, I know Melissa uh, talked about make uh, writing and writing environments. These are excellent professional books too. Um, and a new book that all team members will be receiving in a couple of weeks um, is Story Workshop. And this is a shout out to my sister who might be on this Zoom, who, who recommended that book uh, to me a couple of weekends ago. So that uh, story workshop is by uh, Susan Harris McKay, who um, was one of the lead instructors at Opal. And it looks fantastic. Um, on the right, we wanted to also share um, a project we were working on um, at the same time. And it, it really aligns with our work with Loose Parts. We have over, I think about five years ago, we started curating lists of great picture books that connect um, with the core competencies. And so with those lists, we um, last year, um, we started to develop essential questions that work um, great with these picture books. And so we can use those questions for our provocation tables. Um, we also started working on some sample lessons. And so that's another um, project that we'd like to continue to work on because we find it's very helpful for our teachers, but it's also very helpful for our work um, as we reflect on our practice. Okay, well, thank you for your interest in our, our team's project this, this um, fall. Um, we've provided some resources for you to check on the conference website, as Marianne uh, mentioned. Um, and if you have any questions, um, please feel free to um, enter them in the chat. We see there's some um, maybe comments and questions there. And our team may will gather around together and we can um, answer your questions to the best of our ability. Even the last uh, PDF of all the books and all uh, how it all connects to programs is we put it all in a PDF for you guys. And unfortunately, I'm absolutely, if we get it on that, we'll get it on there and you guys will all get copies of what the school district has been working on there too. All right. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, there are perfect, perfect, perfect. We've been going through some of these questions. Uh, where did you get the cart and how much does it cost? Ha ha, uh, Makerspace carts. It was a good purchase. Uh, we found it, oh gosh, what was the name of the company again? I will find that for you in just two seconds. I lost somebody else answers the question, but it, the cart itself was uh, decently priced around the $700 mark. It was the shipping because of COVID that actually jacked up the price uh, uh, quite a bit. Um, but it is a makerspace cart in particular. I looked at art carts originally and they just didn't have the movability. So makerspace carts were the best. And I will look up the name of the company in just two seconds. Yeah, uh, the, uh, it, the presentation was definitely recorded. Yes, okay. How do you deal with a two-story school and no elevator? Oh. <laughs> is, um, is your library learning commons on one story? I assume it's in one story, not two stories. My recommendation, I, um, I don't know, Rick and Melissa and Nicole, if you have another recommendation, but my recommendation would be to start in your library and um, basically have your loose carts uh, a loose part in the library learning commons is the hub and classes come to see you um, but team do you have any other ideas yeah okay let's take a look at some other questions here um, 
Are there book lists available? Yes, we we do have. Uh, we curated a list of, of picture books um, about three years ago, and so um, we'll make sure that that's a resource that you can access. Um, those are um, aligned with the core competencies, so we use those books. We also purchased um, measurement books as a team. We we sourced out some great numeracy picture books that we used this fall that were included in the cart. So we'll make sure we have a, a list of books for you. Um, thank you. Thank you for the thank yous. We appreciate that. Um, we much would have preferred, especially with loose parts, to be presenting in person. Um, there's nothing like experiencing it, um, you know, yourselves. Um, if we were in person, we would have had you work through the loose parts and, and experience the provocation. So maybe another time we'll be able to do that. Um, how can we access teaching stories to the core competency booklet? We will make sure that's posted on the conference website for sure. Thank you for your interest. That was a passion project of our team and the core competency team uh, with our school district. Um, oh, thank you for including French immersion resources. Um, great. I'm wondering about retelling Indigenous stories. I, I think Marianne might have mentioned this, but we do recognize there's a lot of information in this workshop. There probably could have been um, five workshops um, um, really embedded. In, we have five workshops embedded in one. That is a workshop in itself. And that is the what we started to work on um, prior to the Summer Institute. We worked very closely with our ad ed department. Um, but Rick, I think, has something else to say about that. No? Oh, okay. Oh, I, I was reading Rick's face incorrectly. Um, but we work very closely with the admin team. Alisa? And you could start with um, books, Indigenous stories in book form that you probably have in your library, closely related to the people in your area. You could start with that. You could also connect with your ABED department or go on to CBC. And I, I think there are a number of legends recorded on CBC that you can listen to. So how we worked with the Indigenous uh, stories, uh, Kent and Thomas, um, uh, he um, was so helpful and worked with us about teaching features, teaching characteristics, um, um, going through different legends with us and breaking it down, retelling it and helping us retell the story. And then we use those parts and we ask students to retell with a partner and maybe from a different perspective. Um, let's say from Bear's perspective, from Coyote's perspective. And so retelling and practicing retelling. But we did we did work really closely with the ABED department um, for a couple of years, actually, just learning about features of oral um, storytelling techniques. Any other questions here? Sorry. Okay. Yes. I'm just putting in the um, chat box my email and address. Um, it, uh, I am not finding at the moment where I purchased that part from. Um, but if you have, uh, if you want, just email me and I can email you that back. As well as not only that, um, uh, if we don't end up getting the the PDF out there somehow or whatever, and you're not getting it, just uh, email me and I'll send you the PDFs um, links to the website. We'll just put all of them. Okay. Thank you very much. I think okay. I can. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, great. Well, thanks everyone for coming to our workshop, and uh, we hope you enjoy the rest of the presentation. <laughs>